I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that there is one thing that everyone in the electronic engineering ecosystem wants. Whether you're working on a small IoT device or a giant server farm, we all want one thing. To save space. Saving board space is becoming more and more of a necessity these days. But how do we maintain the same performance we need while at the same time increasing our density and reducing our overall complexity? By looking at our connector solutions. That's how. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Nowhere is the need for the reduction of board space more important than in the realm of high-performance servers. And one way we can reduce complexity and reduce overall board space in our server designs can be found in the connector solutions we choose. In this episode of Chalk Talk, David Einhorn from Amphenol joins me to discuss how Amphenol's double-density cool-edge interconnects can not only reduce board space, but also lessen complexity and give us greater flexibility. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Amphenol's double-density cool-edge interconnects. Hi, David. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Great to meet you. So, David, we're talking about the next generation of card edge interconnects today. But before we get started, what's driving the need for these kind of double density connectors? It comes down to one word, and it's space. And it seems awfully simple, but our customers are continuously demanding, what can we do to reduce the overall space that interconnect takes up on their board? But of course, maintain or increase the functionality within that space. So our customers have more and more feature-rich applications, and they need to add more functionality. Well, in turn, we need to keep pace, and we need to add more functionality and density to the overall connector platforms. It comes to density, performance, and really, what can you do in the smallest amount of space possible? That makes sense. Now, besides saving space, what other benefits are we looking at here with these double-density cool-edge connectors? At a high level, we're talking about flexibility in a connector platform, having a highly configurable connector product line where you have high-speed pairs, signal contacts, as well as power contacts in a single connector platform. So it's not just about space, but it's also about functionality within that space. And part of that will be the connector and the amount of trace lengths that are required to go from the CPU to riser cards, for instance, where we can minimize the overall trace lengths. And we do that by having a higher density platform. Excellent. Now, David, can we get under the hood of these connectors? What kind of features are we talking about here? We sure can. So a very typical pin pitch for card edge connector technology is a 0.8 millimeter pin pitch. That's kind of the baseline that we started with. And doubling that brings what we call an effective pitch of 0.4 millimeters. So very easy to do the math on that. We doubled up the number of pins in a given length of a connector. The connector in the end is a little bit taller and a little bit wider, but overall saving a tremendous amount of space. So it can accept two different add-in card thicknesses, 32 gig PCIe Gen 5 signal speed, and it's a very configurable platform, like I mentioned before. So this wafer design where the customer can choose any number of single-ended or high-speed pairs or even power pins and configure that entire connector any way they want. Cool. Okay. So David, I'm super interested in the wafer design in particular. Can we dig into that aspect a little more? Sure. You'll see the image here with uh, the signal wafer and the ground wafer. And then in the next slide, you'll also see the power wafer. It's a common form component. So they all look the same, but they have different material properties. So we have different metals or different alloys that we use depending on high speed needs, ground needs, or power needs. So in this case, you'll see kind of a very typical configuration, what we call a ground signal signal ground. And again, we'll get into a little bit more detail on that in the coming slides. So what you'll see here is the, what I mentioned before, very similar looking contact. 
but different materials used. So there is a copper alloy used specific to the power pin, which allows for higher current draw. Excellent. Now, earlier you mentioned that this solution includes a hybrid configuration of high-speed, single-end, and power pin options. Can we take a closer look at the signal pin in particular? Sure. And what I'll show you here is I'll show you the signal pin, then I'll show you the power pin. And the reason why I was showing the signal pin in a power situation is we're often asked, what kind of power can we run over a signal pin? And this just might be from an ease of configuration standpoint, if the customer just wants a whole bank of signal pins and they allocate a certain number of pins for their signals and a certain number of pins for power, easy configuration. Also, maybe the power requirements are really not that high. So we can use the same material throughout the connector. In this case, you're looking at a test setup, which is a very common test setup where you see starting with four pins all the way down to 40 pins. And it's important that we test a number of pins close to one another. So derating is the word. Derating is what engineers are looking at to see really what's the performance in a real world application. And with localized or the potential for localized heating, you'll see that the current performance actually decreases as the pin quantity goes up, which is very, very normal. So you start at a baseline of one amp per pin. And when you get into the 40 pin realm, then we're talking about 0.6 amps. So anywhere from a four amp application up to a 24 amp application, depending on how you configure it. So these are all adjacent contacts next to one another. So you can very easily take the same contacts and space them out and add some signal contacts in between and have banks of four, banks of eight, something like that, and get even more performance. Cool. So what about the power pin? What kind of current rating are we looking at here? Yeah, significantly more. And we start with an amperage of 2.375 per pin for a four pin quantity test. And it goes down to just a little over one amp per pin if you put all 40 pins as power pins. So, you know, we test two worst case scenarios, a very common temperature rise of 30 degrees C. And, you know, this is with all contacts fully energized throughout, which of course is not necessarily real world application, but we want to show the real limit performance for these contacts. So this is showing a configuration where the PCB can be used to help manage some of the power. So when you gang some of the power pins together and you gang those contacts together at the board level, it helps with some heat dissipation, also helps with the overall current carrying of that bank. So the current carrying performance will increase in that bank. Okay, so David, can we take a closer look at the pin configurations? Sure, and what we're showing here, since space is what we're talking about and dimensions is critical to that, is you know, here are the three different pin configurations and just real rough, give you a, a snapshot of the dimensions for these pin configurations. So starting out with, let's look at the dimension B because the length is what we're asked about the most. That's taking up the most space on the board. And dimension B, you're looking at in a 76 pin configuration, a 20 millimeter connector, 148 pin connector, it's 34.8 millimeters. So if you look at this bank, the view is essentially the same, but we're just showing you more pin configuration. So, you know, let's go all the way up to the extreme of 428 pins. You know, we're talking about a connector that is 94 millimeters long. What's going to be interesting, and we'll show you this in just a minute, is the comparison of double density cool edge and more traditional card edge type products, our standard cool edge family and PCIe, which we'll get to in a second. Cool. Now, do you have an example of what the pin assignment would look like in a real world application, especially for an application that needs both high and low speeds? Absolutely. Very common configuration. I'll show you this here is a two bank connector and you'll see kind of this wall towards the middle, towards the right hand side, three quarters away towards the right. That's a keying feature. But in this case, it also acts as a separator of the low speed pins versus the high speed pins. So we color coded the pins so you can see the reds being the grounds and the yellows being the differential pairs or the signals throughout. And it's that very common tried and true ground signal signal ground configuration. So David, what about a completely high speed application? What does that pin assignment look like? Yeah, super simple. Ground signal signal ground, entire thing. So 
here on this next slide, again, with the reds and the yellows, it's that same pattern throughout. So very easy to configure and again, proven layout in the industry. Okay, so I know that a lot of applications in this realm need a mix of different speeds. What does that kind of pin assignment look like? Sure, this is extremely common is to have a mix of high speed differential pairs, low speed single ended and power contacts within the same connector housing. This provides a tremendous amount of convenience and it allows for just kind of easy routing and a real dense overall solution. So you're not handling a separate power connector and a separate low speed connector and a separate high speed connector. So again, you have the bank of high speed signals, ground signal, signal ground. And to the right hand side, past the key, you see the yellow low speed signals and the blue power. Very simple and proven layouts. Excellent. Now, David, how do your double density cool edge connectors compare with other connector solutions on the market today? Yeah, this is what I was referring to before. And this is an important distinction is the double density cool edge. How much space are we taking up on the customer's application? Again, length being the most critical of those dimensions. Just look at the pins and you look at a PCIe, which is a one millimeter pitch, 164 pins over a length of 89 millimeters. And the 0.8 millimeter standard card edge pitch, or that's our standard cool edge product line, would be 196 pins over 89 millimeters. So the next closest or the closest configuration that we have to that 89 millimeters is an 87 millimeters with a 392 pin density. So right there, that's the stark contrast of what we call the effective pitch of 0.4 millimeters, single housing, tremendous number of pins, double of what you've seen in these other applications. Great. Now, David, what kind of applications do you see the double density cool edge connectors being a good fit for? The majority of what we're seeing so far is in the server and storage world. So most specifically right now in the high performance computing arena. Not necessarily supercomputer, although we have some involvement with some of the supercomputing applications, but certainly on the higher performance applications. And what we'll see is, as a trend moving forward is we anticipate that the need will come for more standard type computing applications. But right now, with AI being really important and all these GPU servers going to data centers, the density, performance, speed requirements required in these servers are tremendous. And all our customers are looking for ways to add in the features that they need to and reduce the overall space that the hardware inside is taking up. And that's why we're doing this. That makes sense. Now, I can definitely see how this kind of connector would be a good fit for supercomputer applications in particular. Are you guys seeing that as well? Yeah, exactly. So here, if you look at this example of an application, this is a supercomputer application where we're actively designed and testing right now. And you can see the number of slots that we can add or PCIe expansion slots that we can add on a single double density cool edge connector. Here on the lower right, you have this five PCIe expansion slots that is being accommodated by a single double density cool edge connector. And before this, there's no way to possibly do that. So lots of density in this add-on card feature. Great. Now, David, what about cable assembly? Can we get into that aspect as well? Sure. And, and this is a natural progression of the product line is, and again, same thing that happened with our standard Cool Edge product line. Customers start using it. They start becoming familiar with all the applications that they can use card edge technology in. And then start thinking outside the box, you know, how can we use that same technology and cableize it? And this is the next phase for us right now. So what you're seeing here is an example of a 78 pin high speed cable. The board connector is exactly the same as the other connectors. So it's common technology. We didn't have to do anything special for that. And what you're able to do here, what our customers could do is have greater overall mechanical flexibility. And sometimes having two rigid boards that are mated in a perpendicular fashion, that's not always the most efficient for the design, not always the most convenient. Sometimes it just can't be done at all. And some mechanical, some tolerance issues need to be resolved by having high-speed cables, you know, bring the signals from board to board. That makes sense. Yeah, so what we're showing here with this next group of pictures 
is just more examples of what we can do with the cable side of double density cool edge. And what we're seeing is, you know, how can we reduce complexity and reduce some overall content? So if you look in the upper right here, actually the two top pictures, you'll see this mid plane. So what if you can have a mid plane that wasn't actually a mid plane? What if you had a mid plane where all the signals were managed through pass through connectors? And that's what you're seeing here is that this mid plane, although you see some gold fingers on the bottom, the mid plane acts as a mechanical holding feature, if you will. And this is just one example. Whatever is being mated into that cable connector or that receptacle that you're seeing there is just a direct connect to a cable and not a connector on a mid plane and then a mid plane with a connector on the other side. So you're going to save tremendous amount of cost and complexity in design. Excellent. Now, David, where do you see these cool edge connectors headed in the future? Everywhere. We see them going everywhere. But seriously, we have seen car edge technology in general proliferate through really every industry. And although it started for us in the server and storage world, we've seen usages in medical, industrial, you name it. It's only natural that additional performance and density are going to be required in our customer systems, not only in server storage and data center world, but also in all these other industries. So it's just a matter of time before we get those requests of, hey, how can we add more density to this application? And we'll be proposing double density cool edge for those. Excellent. Well, David, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It was my pleasure. And thank you very much, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>